uh, we are going to talk about today uh, about the spread duration of floaters. And I think I gave an argument in class, but I want to reiterate this, reiterate this argument in this video. Okay? So first, let's think about floaters, right? Let's think about floaters without, you know, without the spread, right? So basically we said that we have a floating, right? And if a corporation issues a floater, okay, it's basically going to adjust the payment of the coupon on a periodic basis. So for example, if you have a LIBOR, an index, which is going to be 25 basis points, right? And your margin is going to be 2%. So in, next, in the next three months, you're going to pay 2.25% divided by four, right, whatever it is, of the coupon on your principal, then in, let's say, in, a, in another three months, if the LIBOR is going to be 0.5%, you're going to pay 2.5% as your payment. Okay? Now, the question is, how do we think about the spread duration of this, of this floater? So we said about duration, right, that it's actually, uh, that it's actually uh, very easy, right? Because every three months, you have an adjustment of the, you know, of your uh, LIBOR, of your coupon to the LIBOR, to the, to, the, to the interest rate, right? So every time, you can think about this as being a sequence of bonds which are issued every three months, right, with a new coupon. And these uh, new bonds, right, they mature. They mature in, you know, in five years. So this is easy, right? You have, every time you have a sequence of, uh, of, uh, of, of uh, bonds which are issued every, every three months, right? So their duration, right, and the payment and the interest rate is adjusted. So you know that their duration is going to be around 25, uh, 20, uh, 0.25 years or three months, right? So this is easy. Now, but what about the spread duration of the floater? So, the construction that, you know, that I used in class was hand-waving. What I want to do now is to solidify it a little bit, right? So what we are going to do now, we are going to describe a corporate floater, a corporate floater as follows, okay? So we will say that a corporate floater equals to the following, to the following thing. It's actually a corporate fixed bond. minus the corresponding treasury with the same maturity plus a floater that is without the corporate component. Right? So it's a treasury floater. Okay? So in other words, what you are having here if you have a corporate floater, right, you are having a bond which is issued by a corporation, okay, and it has basically a LIBOR, right, plus some margin, okay, you can think about this as follows. You take a fixed bond at this point in time, right, with a certain coupon. You subtract from it a corresponding treasury. So let's say the bond matures in five years, right, you're going to subtract from it five-year treasury. And you are going to add, okay, a synthetic bond, which is basically doesn't have, which is not issued by the corporation, but it is issued by the treasury. A synthetic bond, right? Because those bonds, until, let's say, half a year or a year from uh, now ago, right? They didn't exist in the market. The treasury always issued, right? Always issued, okay, uh, fixed coupon bonds. They never issued, right, until recently, they never issued floating rate bonds, right? So this construction, this portion, right, this treasury floater is actually going to be synthetic, okay? By the way, this guy and this guy together do exist in the market and they are called swaps. But we are going to talk about this a little bit later in the lecture. But for now, right, just think about the construction here. You have a corporate floater, basically a, corp a corporation issue, issues a, you know, a floating bond with a margin, attached to it, right? You can think about it in the following way. First, you can issue a fixed bond. A corporation issues the same fixed bond, right, with a 
with a core with a fixed coupon fixed bond i mean bullet bond with a fixed coupon you subtract from it right the corresponding treasury so you are getting the margin and then you add the floater right so this guy this guy is going to be connected with the libor index right this guy these guys right is going to generate in some sense the margin So if, let's say, right, the corporation has a fixed bond, let's say, of 5%, okay? So it has a 5%, okay? Now the corresponding treasury is going to be 3%. So 5 minus 3 is 2%. You can think about this difference in coupon, right, as being a margin of 2%, okay? So once you issue a corporate fixed bond minus the treasury, right, this is going to be fixed. You add a floater to it. You add a you know, you add a LIBOR index without any margin, right? You're going basically to get a floater, okay? Now, what is going to be, if I'm looking at this in this way, what is going to be the uh, duration, right, and the spread duration of this portfolio, okay? So we said we are, we are smart people. We know how to do it. We just do a, a sum product, right? So the corporate fixed bond and the corporate Treasury, because they have the same maturity, right, their duration will be more or less the same. Once again, people will say, no, it's not, yada, 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 but it's more or less the same, will be more or less the same. Okay? This guy, however, right, will have a duration of uh, 0 0.25, right, because it's a floater. So every three months, yada, 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 it adjusts. Right. So this, these guys will have almost the same duration. This guy, right, will have a floater. Will have basically, uh, you know, uh, will have a very small duration. So you have duration here. The duration of corporate minus the duration of treasury plus the duration of the LIBOR, right, which is going to be around 0 0.25 because these guys cancel each other. Right. They cancel each other because the duration of a five-year bond, right. Well, five-year bond with a low risk, right, equals to the duration of a five-year treasury, which trades below it, okay? It's not the same, yeah, I know, but it's actually pretty close. So you can actually think about this as canceled, right? So that's, you are going to get the duration of your floater of this, of this, of this portfolio being the duration of uh, 25 or whatever to the next reset. What happens with the spread duration? This is actually very, very nice. The spread duration, the corresponding treasury doesn't have spread duration because it has no spread risk. The corporate fixed bond has a spread duration, let's say, of five years, right? So this guy will have spread, so this, this thingy will have a duration of five years, right? Minus, right? And now here you don't have any, any, any spread duration, so it's zero and minus zero, so it's you will get five, right? The last time I checked, minus five, five minus zero minus zero is five, right? So you are going to get that this corporate floater has a spread duration which is coming from this corporate fixed bond, okay? So that's explanation. That's explanation, right, of, you know, of how the floaters, right, how the spread duration of the floater suddenly equals to spread duration of corporate fixed bond because nothing kills the spread. Nothing kills the spread, right? You see here from this construction that what you kill, right, you can kill actually the, the interest rate because if, when you subtract the corporate fixed bond from the corporate treasury, you basically kill the underlying curve, the interest rate curve, the government curve. Every time you, this moves, this moves, and they cancel each other, right, because their duration is the same. However, right, so if, for example, this moves, right, let's say the duration is five, so if this moves by five, percent this will move by five percent right so five minus five all they they have similar you know similar uh, market values right they will cancel each other and that's a construction right that you need to bear in mind okay so i know that it was a little bit complicated here than usual videos right but i think you can you can handle it okay so just think about this construction think about what it tells you right and then you will understand i hope why the spread duration of a corporate floater equals to the spread duration of a corporate fixed bond. I mean, maybe it's not the same, but it's close enough. All right? So thank you very much, and have a great day, and good luck on the test.